So once you have your full Victron system installed with servo and touchscreen, this is going to be your uh, monitoring view. This screen will go to sleep when inactive. To wake it up, simply press anywhere on the screen. The screen here will show you how much power is coming in from shore. We are on an off-grid job site, so we have no shore power. Shore power can be plugged into a home, plugged into a generator, plugged into an RV stub. Uh, this is grid power coming in, um, again, or generator. This shows you your battery bank status. Right now our battery bank is down to about 45% of its max capacity. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries, so you don't have to worry too much about running them to zero. You don't want to do it all the time. Ideally, you would let them get down to about 10 or 20%, and then when it hits that 10 or 20% mark, reduce your loads, let it get some recharge time uh, from the solar. If it's nighttime, crank on the generator, let it get some juice in or shore power, and then when it gets back up to about 80%, uh, you know, turn it off if you're on generator because the last 80 to 100% takes a long time, just like on your lithium battery in your phone. Um, we're pulling right now 34 watts from DC power. We've got some battery charging going on. We've got 47 watts pulling, inverting through the inverter for AC loads. And we have an 800 watt array on this rig. Right now, again, it's 8.30, 9 o'clock and we've got some shade trees on our east side. So of our 800 watt max potential, we're pulling in 136. That number will go up as the day progresses because it's a nice clear day. This is a good uh, example of why you do want to park uh, where you don't have shading issues on your array because shading on your panels will reduce the overall draw in. So definitely find a good sunny spot so that you're capturing as much solar during the day as you can. Another screen that you can see that's pretty nifty is this one, same information, uh, different form. You can scroll the bottom independently, or you can scroll the top to this other screen, which is really nice if you have tank monitors. Um, so we use ultrasonic tank sensors, Ruby tags for temperature, humidity, motion. If you have those in play, they will show up here and we can name them you know, living room temperature, uh, gray water tank sensor, so that it's intuitive to what readout you're seeing where it's coming from. Again, the same information here that we saw before. The nice thing here is the AC current limit can be changed very easily from the screen. So if we were to plug in shore power, be it generator or um, a plug from a house outlet or an RV park, Say you've got a 30 amp system and you're in an RV park and you've got a 30 amp shore power plug that you can plug into. If the stub of that power source at the RV park looks new and in really good condition, you can bump your AC current limit by clicking here and scrolling up until you get to 30 amps. And then you'll pull as much as you can from that power source. Now, if you're in an RV park and the power outlet stub looks a little worn uh, or if it tends to trip the breaker, what you want to do, because those are, things are abused all the time, is drop it down to about 25. Uh, that way you reduce the risk of tripping the breaker um, of pulling, you know, if they're older, they may not be able to pull or give you a full 30. So, drop it back so that you don't have issues because it can be annoying to lose your shore power. If you've got a 50 amp service and a 50 amp plug in good condition, bump it up to 50. If it looks a little sketchy, a little worn, a little older, drop it down to 45 or 40 for the same reason. If you're at your home or friend's house and you're plugged into an outlet via um, a drop cord, then you want to find out what breaker size that outlet runs on, be it 15 or 20. If you're pretty far from the house, so your drop cord's pretty long, you want to drop it back if it's 15, maybe 10. If it's a 20 amp breaker, drop it to 15. If you're right there, you know, 10, 20 feet from the garage and you've got a fairly short drop cord, you can get closer to that true breaker rating, be it 15 or 20. 
Um, but if you ever have issues with the breaker tripping, just drop this AC current limit down about five of what the outlet is rated for and you shouldn't have any problem. Once you get the right current limit that you want, click accept. It may take a second to, to take the setting. Uh, if it doesn't take the setting, just open it back up again, set it again, hit accept again. Um, AC mode, this is for your inverter. Uh, your inverter should always be on unless you are winterizing the rig and it's staying outside or it's not going to be used. You don't need any power on. Then what you can do is change it to this charger only mode. What this does is allow power if it's available to come into the system, but it will not allow power to be inverted and drain your batteries while you're away. So again, charger only is only really to be used for storage long term if you're going to be gone a month a week and you don't need any power on you don't need the refrigerator on you don't need fans on you know your storage mode charger only is going to be the way to go any other situation and you want your ac mode to be on on is going to allow the inverter to decide when it needs to charge and take in power when it needs to invert power to 120 volts so that your outlets and such work this is a smart system so for 99 percent of the time that you're using your rig just leave it on ac mode on and let the inverter do its smart thing and choose hey i've got power coming in shore and solar we're gonna kick it to the battery and kick some over to the loads uh, it'll choose priority based on our settings and again the other the only other setting you would need is if you're going to store it and you don't want um, power going out from a parasitic draw, then you go charger only and charger only will allow power in but not out. If you're absolutely nervous about storing your rig and it's indoors, there's no power coming in, there's no shore power, there's no sun because it's indoors, then if you're really nervous, you can just say all off. But again, we recommend either using on or charge only. And again, this is a really nice screen for a quick access to these settings. And you scroll again, you're back to the original. Uh, check out our other short post install videos. They will be coming uh, and listed all on the same page. Hopefully this helps you to learn your system and get comfortable with your system a bit more. Uh, we really want you comfortable with your system because then you're going to use it more and enjoy it and be confident. And that's the point, you know, if we don't use what we don't understand and we don't enjoy using it because we get nervous. So we don't want you guys to be nervous. We want you to feel confident in your system. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, we're just a phone call or an email away.